In this lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of media that can be used to connect different computers together into a computer network. Now, there are two different categories. There is the bounded type of media, wires, basically, and the unbounded type of media, which includes radio waves and light. For this lesson, we're just going to stick with bounded media. We're going to talk about the different types of wires that can be used to connect different computers together. The first type of networking media we need to talk about is called coaxial. Coaxial network cabling is similar to the coaxial cabling you use at home to connect up your cable TV or satellite dish system. However, please understand that the type of coaxial cable used for networking is not the same as that which is used for satellite or cable TV. They look the same, but the electrical properties are different. I've on occasion seen folks try to use a piece of cable TV cabling for networking and it kind of works for a minute but then they get all kinds of errors and problems. That's because the electrical properties are different. Coaxial is an older technology and it isn't used that much anymore. There is still a fairly large installed base but it's quickly disappearing. You still need to know about it because you may run into circumstances when you have to support it. However, be aware that it's kind of going away. Coaxial cabling is called coaxial because all the wires, all the conductors, share a common axis. The first is the central conductor right here. This is usually a piece of solid copper wiring, and this wire carries networking signals. Surrounding this central conductor is an insulating sheath that's usually made out of plastic PVC. Then surrounding this plastic sheath is a second conductor. Notice that the center of the second conductor, you write about there, is the same as the center of this inner conductor, hence the term coaxial. Now the second conductor is usually an aluminum or copper mesh. This central conductor is usually used for transmitting signals. This conductor is usually used for grounding. And then surrounding this second conductor, is a plastic PVC sheath, usually black in color, just like your cable TV line. Coaxial cabling has a lot of advantages. It's fairly resistant to electromagnetic interference, and it's pretty resistant to physical damage. You can really twist this cable around without damaging it. However, it's got a lot of disadvantages. First of all, it's quite a bit more expensive than other types of networking mediums. And the biggest disadvantage is that it's not really supported anymore by fast networking standards. Most of the standards that use coaxial cable are limited to 10 megabits per second. That's awful slow by modern standards when we're talking about a minimum of 100 megabits and we really would prefer 1,000 megabits per second. Can't do that with coaxial cable. Now there's three different types of coaxial cable that you'll probably be working with as a hardware tech. The first kind is called RG58. RG58 is used for computer networking. RG59 is the type of coaxial cable that's used for cable TV. And then last, you need to be familiar with RG6. RG6 is used for satellite TV. This type of coaxial cable uses what's called a BNC connector to connect a network interface card to the coaxial cable. These two use what's called an F-type connector to connect to the back of a television set or to the back of a receiver. I suspect that it's unlikely that you will have to do much with coaxial. What you really will be working with is twisted pair cabling. Twisted pair cabling is similar to the type of wiring that's used for your telephone system in your house. Twisted pair cabling is very, very widely implemented today you'll probably be doing a whole lot of work with twisted pair cabling. It's supported by a wide variety of networking standards such as Ethernet, token ring, etc. Twisted pair cabling is composed of pairs of copper wiring such as you see here. This really isn't an accurate diagram because you have one pair, two wires coming out of this one particular piece of cabling. In actuality, twisted pair cabling that you're going to be working with has four pairs or eight different wires coming out. But for simplicity's sake, we're drawing it with two. This twisted pair wiring 
is composed of an inner connector made out of copper, and it's usually 22 or 24 gauge copper wiring. These two different 22 gauge copper wires with their plastic sheath are twisted around each other, and that's done for a very specific purpose. The problem with this type of wiring is that whenever a current passes through any kind of copper wire, an electromagnetic field is created around the wire, and we call it electromagnetic interference, EMI, or sometimes we simply call it crosstalk. Now, if you've ever been at home, had the TV on, and turned on your microwave oven or the vacuum cleaner, and saw a lot of static on the screen because of it, you've experienced electromagnetic interference. It's a radio signal that's being broadcast from the wire. It's not intended, it just happens. Well, the problem with twisted pair wiring is that this interference can be absorbed by the neighboring wire, which interferes or disrupts its signal. To get around that, we twist the wires together. That way, the electromagnetic fields that each wire is emitting cancel each other out, and we negate the problem of EMI. As you can see here, we have the wires twisted together. The tighter we twist these together, the less electromagnetic interference we experience, and hence, the faster we can transfer data through these wires. Twisted pair wiring has a lot of advantages. Number one, it's very flexible. It's very easy to work with. And we said that coaxial was fairly flexible. Well, it doesn't even compare to twisted pair. In addition, it's extremely inexpensive. Coaxial is quite a bit more expensive. Twisted pair is quite a bit less expensive. And one of the big problems that we talked about with coaxial was the fact that modern, fast networking standards don't support coaxial. Well, they do support twisted pair. You can get very, very fast data transfers with simple twisted pair wiring. Unfortunately, twisted pair does have a couple of drawbacks. Number one, it is susceptible to EMI, both from itself, so we twist the wires together, but it's also susceptible to EMI coming from the environment where it's run. For example, one of the things we always tell folks when they're running wiring is don't run it anywhere near a light fixture, especially a fluorescent light, because there's a piece of the fluorescent light called a ballast, and that ballast puts out a tremendous amount of electromagnetic interference. If you run a twisted pair wire by that, you're going to get interference, because these wires will just pick it right up. They absorb signals really easy, but another one of their weaknesses is that they radiate signals. The signals running through the wire get kind of broadcasted very weakly, but they get broadcasted out through the wire itself. And that makes twisted pair cabling susceptible to eavesdropping. If you had someone with the right equipment, they could be outside of the cable and using a special type of radio receiver actually pick up the EMI coming off these wires and be able to capture the data that's coming off. There's actually two different types of twisted pair wiring that you need to be familiar with for A+. The first type is called unshielded twisted pair, and that's what we just looked at here. There's a second type called shielded twisted pair. Basically what we do with shielded twisted pair is encase the entire wire in a second shield to uh, reduce the amount of EMI coming off the wire and reduce the amount of EMI absorbed by the wire. Now, shielded twisted pair is quite a bit more expensive and it's less commonly implemented than unshielded twisted pair. If you see the acronym STP, we're talking about shielded twisted pair. If you see the acronym UTP, we're talking about unshielded twisted pair. There are different types of twisted pair wiring that you need to be familiar with, just like there were for coaxial. They're rated according to what's called their category. The main difference, if you were to look at the two different pieces of wiring that had different category readings, they would look the same to you. The difference is actually their electrical properties. Basically, how tight do we twist these wires together? The tighter the twist, the faster the data, therefore the higher quality of the cable. The first type you need to be familiar with is called Category 3. When you talk to your fellow techs and you read about it in the literature, you'll probably see it just referred to as CAT3. Category 3 is an older type of twisted pair wiring. It can support data transfers of 10 to 16 megabits per second. It's not used all that widely anymore. Instead, what we use a lot of is called Category, or CAT, 5. 
Cat5 will support network speeds of 100 or 1,000 megabits per second, and it's been very widely implemented. There's a newer version of Cat5 that's kind of coming into use. It's called Cat5e. Now, Cat5e is an enhanced version of Cat5, but it offers better crosstalk protection, and it can support speeds up to 10,000 megabits per second. Finally, there's Cat6. Cat6 is a special form of twisted pair. It's designed specifically for fast broadband communications. When we're dealing with twisted pair connectors, there's two different types. There's the RJ11 connector. RJ11 is the type of connector used for your telephone line. If you've ever plugged in a telephone to the wall jack, you plugged in an RJ11 plug. For networking connections, however, we use what's called the RJ45 connector. In addition to coaxial and twisted pair, there is another type of bounded uh, network media that you'll need to be familiar with for A+, and that is called fiber optic cabling. Now, fiber optic cabling is very different from coax or twisted pair. Fiber optic cabling transmits light signals instead of electrical signals. To do that, fiber optic cabling has a clear plastic or glass central core. It's through this central core, glass or plastic, or that light rays are transmitted as pulses and they represent data using binary you know, zeros or ones, pulses on or off, just like electrical signaling can do. At the other end, or on both ends actually, of this uh, fiber optic cabling, we have special light sensitive devices that take that light pulse and turn it back into digital zeros and ones electrically that can be processed by the computer system. Surrounding this central glass or plastic core is a layer of cladding, and this cladding has a special job. Its job is to make sure that the light rays stay in the central core. It's somewhat reflective. So if a light ray kind of gets off and hits up here, it gets bounced back down into the center of the central core. Depending on the type of cabling you're using, surrounding the cladding are several protective layers that make sure that things don't get broken inside here. And then we have a plastic outer sheath that encases it all together. Fiber optic cabling has a lot of advantages. One of the key ones is the fact that it is completely impervious to elect electromagnetic interference. It doesn't use electrical signals, so EMI doesn't have any impact on it. You could run that right over top of a fluorescent light ballast and have no EMI. In addition, because it doesn't use electrical signals, there, you can't eavesdrop on a piece of fiber optic cabling like you could with twisted pair. The light stays in the center. It doesn't leak out as it does with an electrical signal. Because of this, um, fiber optic cabling supports very, very high data transmission rates for very, very long distances, much longer than can be done with um, a type of twisted pair cabling. Unfortunately, um, fiber optic cabling also has many disadvantages. The key one is the fact that it is very, very expensive as compared with twisted pair. It's not, you're not likely to see fiber optic cable go from the, the network backbone to the workstation itself. Um, some people do do that, but for the most part, folks just use um, fiber optic cabling for the backbone and then use twisted pair to connect workstations to it. It's a lot less expensive. In addition, fiber optic cabling is not as flexible as coaxial or twisted pair cabling. It's very easy to break um, fiber optic cable if you twist it too tightly. In addition, you and I with twisted pair or coaxial can put together a networking cable. We can put the connectors on the end and plug them in and have everything work. With fiber optic cabling, that's not the case. You need special training to learn how to put the ends on the, on the piece of fiber optic cable properly. Now, just as with um, coaxial and twisted pair, there's different types of fiber optic cable. The first type is called single mode. Single mode fiber optic cable transmits light as a single ray, and we call that ray a mode. Single mode cabling is used for very, very, very long data transmissions. It has a very, very thin core, about 10 microns in diameter. And because of the way it's constructed, the light stays in the center of the core. It doesn't bounce around very much. 
and that allows us to have very long cable runs and it allows us to support very high data transfer rates. Oh, by the way, single mode is also the most expensive type as well. There's a second type that's used called multi-mode. Multi-mode fiber uses a much thicker core between 50 and 100 microns. Single mode, we transmit one ray of light through the core at a time. With multi-mode, we actually transfer multiple rays of light concurrently at different frequencies. That's why we call it multi-mode, multiple modes or multiple rays. Single mode, because of the way the cable is constructed, the light tends to stay in the center of the cable. Not so with multi-mode. With multi-mode, the light likes to bounce around. To keep the light going where it needs to be, the cladding is designed to reflect the light back in at a specific angle based on the frequency. By doing that, we're able to keep the light in the cable. However, it also causes the light to get dispersed as it travels through the cable. Hence, multi-mode cables cannot be as long as single-mode cables. Just as with coaxial and twisted pair cabling, there's a variety of different connectors that can be used to connect fiber optic cabling to a network interface card or other network device. The first type is called the ST connector. It's used with single mode and multi mode cabling. It's a keyed bayonet type of connector. You push it in and you twist it and it keeps everything in place. It's got a ceramic ferrule to ensure that the core here is aligned properly with the receiver over here. There's also a type called the S. C connector. An SC connector is also used with both single and multi-mode types of fiber optic cabling. However, it's just a push-on, pull-off type of connector that uses a locking tab. And it also uses a ceramic ferrule to make sure that the cable is all lined up so that the light transfers through the connector properly. There's also a type of connector called the LC connector. Just like ST and SC, LC can be used with either single or multi-mode cabling. And it's a plastic connector with the locking tab. And just like the other two, it also uses a ceramic ferrule to ensure that we got everything lined up properly. The last type of connector you need to know about is the MT-RJ connector. This connector is also used with either single or multi-mode cabling. It's a plastic connector that has metal tabs to lock it in place, and it also uses the ceramic ferrule to assure proper alignment. Of these three different types of network cabling, the one you're probably going to be spending the most time with is Twisted Pair. So I'd become very familiar with it if I were you. It's inexpensive, it supports high data bandwidths, and it's used a lot in the industry. In this lesson, we talked about three different types of bounded network media. We talked about coaxial, we talked about Twisted Pair, and finally we talked about fiber optics.